It looks kind of like a mess right now in here, but actually, if you look through the hole right here. Welcome to our home gym. We're just gonna show you all the pieces of equipment. We're gonna talk through some of the choices that we made and why we went with what we did versus some of the other things that we considered. So that way, if you're getting a home gym as well and you're looking at these reviews to kind of piece it together, uh, you could kind of do the same thing and decide on one piece versus another. So let's go ahead and get started with flooring. We actually did a whole video on flooring, which I'll link in the description below. But basically, we decided to get Play Forge rolled rubber flooring half inch. So this flooring is half inch rolled rubber. It comes in these giant heavy rolls and you have to unroll it and cut it into position. This is a pretty good option. The other options were like foam mats, which I wouldn't recommend for anyone, or tractor supply mats, which actually are a pretty good option. Um, if we would have went with a garage gym or a basement gym or something like that, we might have gone with the tractor supply mats because they're a little cheaper, they're really heavy duty, but they don't give you the, the seamless look that we were looking for for this room for filming and for consults and for all the other stuff we're gonna do. It's about $5 per square foot. Overall, it was a pretty good deal. All right, while we're talking about the space, this is essentially like the office room of our house. And since this basically is our job, we wanted to make the office room into a gym room. It's 11 foot by 18 foot, roughly the size of a one car garage. Pretty much fits everything you need. If you have a two car garage and you're using one space, you could fit a pretty similar layout into your space. All right, now let's go ahead and get into some equipment and we'll start with the squat rack. So the squat rack that we decided to go with was the Monster Light Half Rack from Rogue. I like Rogue stuff. We lived in Columbus, Ohio for eight years, went to Ohio State, OH for any Buckeyes out there. Um, I like Rogue equipment. I'm really glad we went with the half rack. We looked at some of the full racks and it would have taken up like half the room. And especially because I'm really tall, I couldn't even overhead press in a full rack anyway. So um, definitely I think the half rack was the best choice for us. It gives us plate storage on the rack. And then also you can get these safety spotter arms um, so that way you could do all of your squats and other lifts outside of the rack safely. Um, I think this is the best option, especially for a smaller space like this, is the half rack. You could also go with a squat stand, which is just uh, basically like this pole. You wouldn't have the weight stacks, but then you're gonna have to figure out like a weight tree for your weights. Um, so I decided to go with the half rack and I think that was the best option. We went with the 17 inch version here. You could have gotten the 24 inch version, which would stick out just a little bit more. The price difference actually isn't that much. And the benefit of the 24 inch version is that it does give you just enough room to use the rogue cable attachment. If you're ever going to get like a weight stack and the cable attachment to be using with your squat rack, but we decided we're probably not going to do that. And we just wanted to keep this kind of as close to the wall and leave as much floor space as possible. All right, next we want to talk about plates and the plates that we decided to go with. And for this, we have Oss. Go ahead and take it away, buddy. I'm just kidding. Oss doesn't talk, but we went with the echo plates. The echo plates are the middle of the line option for rogue competition plates have more of like a concentrated steel mass in the center. Um, that's more important for weightlifting. And then you have like some really cheap ones, like the compressed tires, like the HG plates. We've used those, but the problem is they're really thick. They're kind of hard to move. You can't fit that many on like a trap bar or a bar. So we decided to kind of go with these. They look really good. And I think that it was probably the best option for us. You have different colors. So I think that looks really good in videos and stuff. This is the best way to put them on the rack. 10s at the bottom, 25s the next level up. 45s right here at chest level where it's easy to get them on and off the barbell and then change plates at the top. These change plates are extremely expensive for no reason, but there's no better options. Um, I don't know why, but they are very expensive. I think it was like $90 or something like that for like two and halves and fives, but, and they're not even that good. They like, they slide onto the barbell like do they get stuck when they're sliding on? I don't know. If you guys do have better recommendations on change plates, let me know. But we just wanted everything to match, so we went rogue. Um, but these are kind of a ripoff. And then lastly, on collars, we just went with the cheap one that uh, Coop recommends with Garage Gym Reviews. We watched like a bunch of his videos. And he said these D-Moose collars are really good. And actually, I would agree we got these. And they were a great value. They were like 10 bucks or something on Amazon or 12 bucks, And they were great clip really easily. Um, yeah, I would actually recommend those. All right, next let's cover the barbell that we decided to go with. We have one barbell for now, one all-purpose barbell for our gym. And we did end up getting a specialty trap bar, which we'll cover later, but one 
regular straight barbell that does everything. And for that, the best option is the Rogue Ohio Bar. Uh, the Rogue Ohio Bar is just a regular barbell. It doesn't have a center neural. It's a bushing, so it's not like super spinny like an Olympic bar, um, but it, it does everything you need to do. It's a really fair price. Since we actually got this, Rep came out with a similar bar, the Colorado Bar. And uh, Colorado is not as good as Ohio, obviously, so it's not as good of a barbell. I actually don't know. It might be a, a good option as well. They're probably pretty similar. But again, we decided to go with Rogue uh, because of our ties to Columbus, and, and it's a really good barbell. So I would actually recommend this to everybody. We decided to go with the Black Cerakote, which is like the mid-tier version. We actually went to Rogue headquarters while we were in Columbus and kind of checked them all out. The Black Zinc rusts really fast even in their headquarters, which is indoor. Uh, they said some of the bars were there for like three or four years and they were already starting to rust. So don't go with the black zinc. It's, it's a little bit cheaper, yeah, but it's gonna rust much faster. Black Cerakote is kind of in the middle. If we were in a garage gym, we probably would have gone with the straight up stainless steel because that never rusts, uh, it can't oxidize. So that's a really good option if you're in like a garage space or a humid space. But for us, we're indoor, it's climatized. Um, not a huge concern, but we still wanted to go with something that's kind of good. So we went with that Cerakote middle option. All right, and now we have the bench. We decided to go with the Rogue Adjustable 3.0 bench. And this has been a really solid bench for us so far. Uh, we actually looked at the Manta Ray, which was like their super premium thousand dollar bench. It has slightly nicer padding. Probably doesn't matter though. I think this is a really solid bench. This one, you actually can pick it up on Facebook Marketplace. We waited for like probably about three or four months looking on Marketplace for one, and there wasn't one. And then after we bought one, there was like two or three that came up for like two or $300 less than the full price. Um, so if you're patient with it, you probably can find one of these on Marketplace. Uh, maybe you'll find the old version, but uh, I think this is a solid buy even at full price. It's adjustable, so it has all the way to flat. It doesn't go decline, but it goes all the way to flat. Um, and then it goes all the way up to 85 degrees. So this does everything you need. It has three adjustments in the front. It's pretty easy to move. The wheels are decent. We decided to get the one with just like the regular wheels, not the, like, there's a slightly higher version one that's like $100 more that has a stainless steel plate here and like nicer wheels. But honestly, that probably doesn't matter. I think the one we went with is pretty solid and it does the job. Also, while we're here, we do have a Vitruve device, which is a velocity-based training device. This is a string that attaches to the barbell and it tests your bar speed. This thing is super cool. They actually sent it to us, we didn't buy it. And then we attached a steel block to it. So that way it cannot like kind of drift off the floor like that. So you're supposed to put it on a weight plate, but we have all rubber plates. So we had to get like a steel block and just paint it black. But I love this thing. A lot of great data for it. We're using it on our high school athletes and collecting data from them as well um, to test a lot of different things about speed and power and force velocity curves. So if you wanna stay tuned on how to use this, follow along and we'll make some future videos. And we do have a code, so if you want to get one of these, you can get 10% off with code movement. All right, so now let's go ahead to this wall. And we actually are probably gonna do something with this wall, put like a movement logo or like a neon sign or maybe paint it or something. But for now, it's fine. It just has this one nail. But uh, we're just gonna cover the rack here and then on our kettlebell, we decided to go with one kettlebell if we wanna do swings or something like that, just a 53 pounder. Um, this is a pretty versatile middle of the range kettlebell and we'll probably add more over time, but gotta get started somewhere. Uh, this is a MOBO board. I picked this up a couple years ago um, for some gait issues that I was having with like my lower leg. It helps you essentially retrain the way that you shift weight through your foot when you're running and it does so without having like a toe space so that way you don't grip your toes into the ground which is a problem for some runners so that's kind of cool but what you probably care about the most is the dumbbell rack we decided to go with the three-tier universal rogue storage rack at first we were thinking we would do two tiers of dumbbells one tier of like kettlebells and stuff like a flat shelf at the top but we found this one on marketplace that was 2300 for like all the dumbbells except for the 80s so fives up to 70s and the rack which is a really good deal it saved us like 700 bucks from buying this all new having three tiers is just enough space to fit fives through 80s so if you're thinking about getting one of these um, just know maybe you could squeeze like one more set in if they were really tight but this is about the tightest that you want it because you want to be able to easily get these on and off 
Also, know that this rack is extremely heavy and the bolts are extremely big. Like you need a one inch wrench, which I didn't even have. I have like a wrench set that goes up to three quarter inch. So you need to get like a big crescent wrench and you actually need two of them to be able to get both sides of the bolt and to build this thing. And you can honestly, unless you're really, really strong, you probably can't move this with like two people um, because this thing, this rack, this three tier storage rack alone probably weighs like 500 pounds. It's, it's very, very heavy and it's big. All right, now let's get into some of the non-rogue stuff. This is a super underrated piece of gym equipment. And if you have a home gym, especially if you're tall, but honestly, I think everyone can benefit from having wedges. So these are the two that I use the most, is a 10 degree and a 20 degree wedge. And these are the prime fitness wedges. Uh, they're this diamond plate, so that way you can kind of have some grip on it. I think these 10 degree wedges are super, super useful for just slightly changing a movement. So if you're talking about squats, or if you're talking about doing split squats, or if you wanna do um, some cool stuff with manipulating the position of your, your foot, so that way you could do different uh, exercises and gain range of motion through your midfoot or through dorsiflexion. These are really, really good pieces of equipment to have. And it's really changed the ability for me to load heavy on high bar squats, just being really tall. Yeah, I would definitely recommend these and the Prime Fitness ones are great. All right, a couple more pieces here. The weight vest. This Rogue weight vest is their new plate carrier version. And I think this is great if you're gonna go with this. I would definitely recommend 20 pounds. So 20 pounds is like the standard for like competing in a bunch of CrossFit competitions. And the benefit of 20 pounds is it's 10 pounds on each side. So if you want to remove one, you have a 10 pound weight vest also. It would just be all weight, all the weight in the front or all the weight in the back, but that's fine because you can strap it tight. Um, so getting the 20 pound version gives you the option to do the 10 or the 20. If you wanna do 40, you could, but for me, I'm gonna do running and jumping with this, and I typically wouldn't recommend people go more than about 10% body weight increase for plyometrics or for running, because the carryover is different, the biomechanics start to shift a little bit. So I think 20 pound weight vest is a really good option for most people, and the plate carriers are great. I do like the shoulder pads, so uh, I think this is a good buy right here. All right, and then the next piece of equipment we have here is the Rep Fitness Box. Get the rep one, don't get the rogue one. I use the rogue version of this uh, a bunch of times and the, the cover is loose and it doesn't feel great. It's harder to move. It's not a good box. The rep fitness one is great. It's just enough weight where it's like, it's firm so you don't like hit it and move it, but it's actually easy to flip and to move. Um, I think this size is the best. It's like 20 inches, 24 and 30 inches. So that way you have the height if you need it, um, but also you can do like just regular box squats on the low setting. <laughs> yeah, I think this is really versatile. This is soft, but it's also like firm enough that you can easily step on it and use it. I think this is a really good box. We actually found this one on Facebook Marketplace. It was a great deal, but even at full price, I think this is a solid box. <laughs> and then this one, we're currently storing in our hallway until we get like a bar carrier or like a bar uh, like wall mount or something for it. But this is the rep trap bar and this is the best open trap bar for the money. This thing is 400 bucks and it is well worth that. It's really well built. Um, the competitors are at the very premium end, like the Alico bar, which is even longer, which we don't want for our space, as well as the open Kabuki trap bar, which is kind of over engineered for what we need. Just want something basic. And there were a couple other budget trap bars kind of in this price range, but from everything I read, this one was the best option and we've had a really good experience with it so far. It doesn't perfectly balance, but it's pretty good. Like if you just set it there, I mean, it'll kind of tip over, but it's, it's pretty good. Uh, this does have the center knurling. So if you want to do like grip stuff with it, or if you want to do, oh, it's very heavy. It's like holding like a fat grip for like a 150 pound dumbbell. Uh, this thing's 60 pounds though. And uh, overall, this is a great trap bar. Whenever you lift it up off the ground, the plates are just barely off the ground, which is perfect for loading and unloading. Um, this is rackable in the rack. So this was where, if you were setting it here on the rack, this is where the safeties would be. It's pretty smooth to uh, lift up and down. And also it has two heights for the handles. I think they actually sell different options for the handles. We just went with the normal. Like I think they sell like a wide and a narrow. This is normal and I feel like it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, I, I would recommend this to anyone. 
Um, we, we don't have any like affiliation with rep, at least right now, but um, yeah, it's a solid trap bar. Stepping out of our gym into our like entry hallway thing. These Perform mini bands are the best mini bands that you can get because they're actually tight. Uh, so a lot of mini band exercises don't provide enough resistance, but for rehab purposes and for other purposes, I think these are the best ones by far. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below to my Amazon store, which has like all this little stuff that I recommend um, in terms of like gym equipment. Um, some other stuff that we have is just like big bands. You probably wanna have these for like banded squats and things like that. Bar pad, foam roller. And then we do have a foam mat here. I use this for like kneeling more so than like balance, but I think this is a pretty solid one. Again, linked in the Amazon store. All right, let's go ahead and take you to the second room, which is our cardio room. This room is so beautiful, it's so great. And we love doing cardio here. This is way better than our dingy 110 degree Las Vegas garage. Um, this will be pretty quick because it's only two pieces of equipment that we have in here. Uh, we just decided to get a Peloton bike and a Peloton treadmill. At full price, these are not necessarily a good value, but you can find these Peloton bikes on Facebook Marketplace for around four to 600 bucks. And that is a great deal because this thing is silent. It's magnetic resistance. And if you're standing like two feet away, not looking at the bike, you can't even tell if it's on or not. So I do a bunch of Zoom calls and work stuff while just like doing, while riding on the bike. So I think having that silent bike is huge, really beneficial. Uh, I think this is a great bike. We do have a standing desk next to it, uh, just to kind of throw like towels and water bottles and stuff like that on. And then we also decided to get the matching treadmill. We actually don't even use the Peloton subscription yet. Maybe we will in like the winter or if we're using it more. Um, but I think this is a solid treadmill. It's really well built. It's smooth. It has these easy adjustable handles to increase and decrease speed and uh, elevation. Overall, I think this is a really good treadmill. Um, the, the screen would probably be really nice to do like classes and stuff, but it's not really what I do. I just throw my iPad like kind of over the top and then put like stuff on the iPad um, and then use these as like easily adjustable uh, speed and incline. Again, if you can get it used, I think this is a pretty good deal, but it probably isn't the best treadmill for the full price. And then over here we have our YouTube space, which is kind of a disaster right now, but eventually this is gonna be like a nice set. We're gonna get like a background and uh, some sort of like nice sign and then knickknacks and stuff and make it look good. Maybe put the whiteboard up on the wall, but that's still a work in progress. Subscribe so you see that in future videos, um, but yeah, that's still a work in progress for now. And then over in this corner, we might add a cable machine at some point. Right now, this is just kind of dead space, but we're thinking about adding a cable machine at some point. If you guys have any recommendations for a cable machine that you would recommend, uh, let me know in the comments. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll put a bunch of links in the description below to this equipment so that way you guys can check them out for your own home gym space. If you do have any recommendations on equipment that you've found to be really beneficial for your space, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. We're obviously very grateful to have this space to be able to make videos for you guys, to be able to do consults and be able to work in. And we really appreciate you guys for watching and for subscribing so we can do that. Thanks so much for watching guys. We'll catch you in the next one.